Hey, what's up everyone? I feel like I owe you a Evo update. Uh, I haven't done much. It's super dirty. It was out underneath the tree and then they were had a fire down the street. So I've got to wash the thing, which I like because it gives me something to do. I like, I like washing cars. Uh, I was planning on doing an update here today that I can't do yet because I don't have the right lugs. Uh, but the, I guess this will be the first thing we talk about here. So these are Wet Sport TC105X. And I bought some 265-35-18s. These are a 18 by 9 and a half, 35 plus 35 offset. You know, a lot of people that run Volks on this will run an 18 by 9 and a half plus 22. So what I'm hoping is that with the leaner offset, I can fit these meaty tires on the thing. The problem is, is I don't have uh, lugs for this. And the stock lugs are that J-cup style. So it'll jack up the wheels if I try to put them on. I was planning on testing them out here today. My, uh, my friend, uh, Freddy uh, Tavarish called me and said, hey, can we borrow your wheels for SEMA? And I was planning on taking these off for him, but I don't think, I think he's out of luck. So um, these, I think, I think, I don't know about the color against this car. I don't know, I think it, I think it might be cool. We'll find out. They're lightweight, you know, Japanese forged wheels. We'll see how it goes. I wanted something different than TE37s that you see so much on this. So we're gonna test fit those, see how those look. I ordered wet sport lugs or, or what are they, lug nuts. And they also make a center cap and then I have the hubcentric rings as well so they'll fit. And uh, no, no TPMS on this car so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, I can't tell you how amazing it is to have your own tire machine. So that way if it doesn't work, I'm not stressing the, uh, the, the need to maybe sell the tires. And I have a wholesale tire account now, so I can always sell the tires basically for what I paid for them. And uh, we'll see how, um, how they fit. So I got the Fujitsubo exhaust on, it's terrible. <laughs> so uh, the Tomei was not the right one, but the Fujitsubo RM01A, uh, it's not terrible, it's just a little weak for me. So I probably need to call a busher and get a busher exhaust because that's what everybody seems to do. Uh, but this particular exhaust, I didn't make a video on it. It's set up the same as the others. Let's come up, I'll show you. It's double resonated and then uh, muffled. I, I'm not a uh, teenager. That's what the Tomei was. Now this one is just too, uh, it's too tame. It looks really, really good though. That's the style I look like. I don't like that like weird Japanese poke out the side look. But you can see pretty clean looking exhaust, all stainless. It was only like a thousand bucks or something like that in comparison to what I'm used to my you know twenty thousand dollar exhaust on the GT3. So it seemed like a bargain. Really nicely done, nice welds, everything looks good. It uh, it's just something that I don't think um, I don't think it's gonna stay on the car too long. And I found I guess what I could do is go catless. I just like to have a cat if I can. And uh, my tuner that's going to tune the car, uh, Chris Carby, said, look, I don't think you're going to see more than a few horsepower difference between a good high-flow cat, it's from MA Performance, and a, uh, you know, full-on, you know, test pipe. I have the test pipe up there, the uh, Tomei, if I needed it, but I think I'm going to try to leave the cat if I can. So if we're starting from back to front, JDM, the JDM rear bumper's done and on and uh, the car has been coated. The car, uh, don't freak out on camera. Every panel on this car, this color uh, looks slightly different from a different angle. Uh, so no, the front fenders weren't repainted. No, the front you know, hood hasn't been repainted. If I stand here and look at the angle, the way the metallic reflects, that front fender is a complete, looks like a completely different color than the door. But if I step right here, now they match. Uh, and or they look the same because of the way that the I guess the metallic reflects The uh, brakes have been done. So if brakes are good. I bedded them. They feel fantastic So I did a project new I forget which pad it was one of the street pads uh, and then gyro discs uh, I like to have a streetable setup not a lot of dust I mean, the car is crazy dirty right now. I shouldn't be making a video, but we're here and I wanted to update you I'm gonna wash it uh, tomorrow the uh, the brakes have been bled. We put in uh, Castro SRF in it, you know, .5, you know, racing fluid, which I, I find to be great on the street. 
as well as if I guess if you were going to go to the track. So the brakes are done and uh, the wheels. So the wheels have been coated. The exterior's been polished and coated. It has uh, a G Tech and Crystal Serum light topped with XO. The wheels have my new favorite uh, armor wheel coating on them. Uh, two coats on those. And then I swapped the stock tires, upsized a little bit to a 245 4017. Uh, these are PS4S's, so a little upsized on the stock wheels. And it's on stock suspension now, but I do have Olin's sitting here. For those of you who don't know, you know, I have pretty nasty obsessive compulsive disorder, and I suffer from uh, panic when driving at times, and well, all the time. Uh, and so I bought this car as my beater. Uh, it was supposed to be a 50,000 mile, you know, $20,000 car. Well, then I found this, couldn't resist it. Uh, but the, the, um, the plan here was to be get, you know, having this car help get me back on the road. And so I wanted to leave it at stock height for now. And, but I do have a uh, molarized version, uh, so slightly different spring rates uh, of the Olin's uh, road and track setup. And then I do have some more white line bushings and parts to put on. The car currently has front and rear white line upgraded or upsized sway bars and end links, adjustable end links. Uh, and so it, uh, it does, I do feel like it rolls a little bit less with the stiffer version of the sway bars, but I still have the stock uh, Bilsteins on the car that we'll be removing here at some point. I just wanted to keep the car in the air. I can dump it, lower it later. So then in the front, if you were to look, since we have the car up in the air, I'll show you up underneath here. The, um, we have the Tomei test pipe and we Kevlar wrapped it or whatever you call that, you know, the Kevlar heat, heat wrap. There's the MA Performance um, uh, high flow cat. And uh, then we put the STM brace, the little front brace here. I forget what they call that, the mustache brace or something like that. And uh, I think that's it here in the front till we get into the engine bay. Uh, so the main suspension change will be a couple of those like the front front trailing arm uh, bushings will change out and then uh, We'll be doing I think different tie The front bump steer kit so we'll change the roll center So the roll just roll center adjuster adjuster kit so we maintain the same geometry when the car gets lowered uh, So we'll be putting that on in the future here the front oh, So I'll pop the hood show you what we did engine bay wise uh, and I'll tell you what's coming uh, but the front end I was planning on I'd ordered an Evo 9 uh, front bumper I was going to make that conversion I just love the way the Evo 9 front bumper looks uh, I haven't ordered head or tail lights yet but I will order those I'm going to do Evo 8 JDM fronts and I'm going to do Evo 7 red tails is my plan uh, but I'd ordered the Evo 9 front bumper but the Mitsubishi dealership I ordered from was just every every day another part was discontinued. Some of the accessory parts you need to bolt it to the car. And I finally just said, you know what? Let's just leave the darn Evo 8 bumper. It's growing on me. So let's leave it. Let's not mess with it. And pop the hood here. The interior, I really haven't done anything um, other than the lowered seat rails. So I lowered the seat, what, an inch? And... Uh, that was it. I'm going to leave the stock shifter, the stock stock shift linkage. I'm not doing a short shifter or anything like that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do any gauges or anything since I'm going to stay math. I think, uh, I think we're going to leave it alone. I tried to do those stupid hood thingies, but it just wouldn't fit. All right, so we did quite a bit of work here. So I bought this car from uh, Mitsubishi up in, uh, up in Illinois, and it uh, had 1,947 miles on it. It's an 05, uh, and so the first order of business was all fluids. So we had to do all the fluids, flush the coolant, we need a new radiator anyway. Uh, I don't even know if I can remember all the stuff we did here. We also did new timing belt, a new uh, APR, uh, you know, carbon fiber timing belt cover. Uh, we did, oh shoot, I don't scratch there, how did that happen? I did all the like STM little reservoir thingies that looks pretty, uh, STM uh, math intake. Uh, I did the, is this a QRJ? 
I don't remember which version of the tile blow off I did. Uh, CSF, the sheep erase version of the CSF radiator, which makes it a little thinner. Uh, the little APR air guide here. I did Cusco front brace and then the, what is it, ETS, Extreme Turbo Systems intercooler, intercooler piping, short route intercooler piping. So that way we could get rid of the, um, all the bulkiness there and the spaghetti of uh, lines that were run. This is the uh, ETS Extreme Turbo Systems uh, uh, battery, some small battery, uh, STM uh, tubular exhaust manifold into the Tomei O2 bung down into the you know Tomei uh, downpipe. And I really like the tubular. So a lot of people said I wouldn't like the tubular sound, but I think it sounds great. Uh, we changed all the bolts and stuff to, you know, stainless. We also did new, uh, what's the new coils, new plugs. Shoot, what else do we do in here? Uh, I think that's about it. So currently, so I paid 76,000 for this thing uh, in buying the best example of a Evo 8, I think probably in the country. You know, uh, you know, a top 20 car in the world, probably as far as uh, cleanliness. And then I proceeded to get the car, you know, moving and on the road and then did, you know, light reversible modifications. So I paid 76 for the car. Uh, I think I'm 120, like right at 120,000 in. So I've paid, so I'm what, 40, 45,000 bucks. Does that sound right? No. I'm 113,000. Yeah, yeah, that's what my spreadsheet was. 113K. You know what? Let's go look at the number so I'm not freaking making this up. I forgot about the wheels, about the wheels. I ordered a turbo. Yeah, so here's what the spreadsheet looks like. <laughs> yeah, so 80K with taxes and all that stuff. Oh, I'm missing shipping. Shipping was 2,500 bucks. Let's put that in here. Insert. Transport, superior, towing, that was 2,500 even. Yeah, and so then I kept everything. So we have all the different Mitsubishi parts, JD Customs, STM Tune, NMA Performance, Nangan, Sheepy Race, Binary Engineering, those were the seat, seat rails. Tires for the stock wheels, STM Tunes, more again, more STM Tune. Uh, some individual parts from Japan uh, to for the rear bumper, STM tune. There's the suspension, 3,200 bucks for that. The wheels are 2,192. More STM, more Nangan. This is the Nangan order I'm waiting for, which is the uh, radiator cap, oil filter cap, and then the center caps and racing nuts for the for the wet sports. Uh, let's see, tile QRJ, that was the blow off, yep. And then I also have an STM fuel rail kit that I haven't put in and we're gonna do that one with the, the injectors and everything. Window tint, uh, and then I just ordered the turbo stuff. Yeah, so I'm 114,000 in. I bought a bunch of exhaust, got a little money back from selling the three different exhaust. And so I'm 114, 687, 74. So that's uh, less, what, 80K, so that's right. That makes more sense. I'm 35,000 bucks into parts on the car. Not all of them on the car yet, uh, but that's, uh, that's where I'm at with it. And that's what you gotta spend. That's excluding, you know, my time in labor, Mike's time in labor. Uh, the, it excludes um, the, you know, detailing, if you were to pay a detailer. So, I, you know, I did all that myself. So, you know, you're going to spend a hundred thousand bucks and this is like a, just a OE plus build, not a crazy build. So these cars, I'm so glad, I feel so fortunate that I didn't buy one of these back in the two thousands, early two thousands when I was younger. Cause I probably would have, uh, probably wouldn't be where I am today. Probably would have gone the car bankruptcy a couple of times. Cause these cars, uh, as you can see, I'm spent 35 K and I feel like I haven't even gotten anything, you know? It's a lot of money to, 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 to get one of these and to do something. And then if you do some crazy stuff, imagine, I can imagine you could spend $35,000, $40,000 just on the engine, uh, which I'm, I'm not particularly interested in doing. So the turbo that's coming that we're going to do, I'm going to do a factory mount Evo 9 turbo, but the FP green version. Uh, and then we'll do, I did the, the Grim Sport Boost solenoid. 
which will be used for tuning. Uh, like I said, the STM fuel rail and fuel pressure regulator will do the injector dynamics 1050s. And, uh, and then, so I'll bolt, we'll bolt all that stuff on here. We'll push it onto the trailer. Uh, and then we'll have Chris, uh, Chris Carby tune it with the factory ECU. I'm not doing a standalone. Uh, I'm just not interested. I'll wait to do the fuel pump as well, the Walboro fuel pump. And then I, I, I'm guessing with all the stuff I put on it, and then the car makes somewhere in the high 300s at the wheels, low, you know, uh, approaching 400 uh, wheel horsepower, which I think would be, would be sufficient. So that, that's my plan. I do want to get uh, uh, the Beat Rush uh, strut tower brace. And then I do want to do a stereo. I want to do the front and rear head and tail lights. So I still have another the taillights, headlights are another, you know, three grand or so. And then I still want to do a stereo, which will probably be 15. So I probably have another 20 grand to spend on this thing. And then I'll probably get rid of it. <laughs> I don't know. I like it though. I don't know that I love it, but I, I really like it. It's, it's doing, it's serving the purpose. I'm, you know, it's completely backfired on me. And this was supposed to be just a beater. You just buy a car, play with modifying it, and and do that kind of stuff. It wasn't supposed to be this whole big you know thing that cost me 130 thousand bucks. But I share these numbers with you so you have some context and frame of reference for what is doing something like this cost. What is it? Um, what is you know why would why would you do it and and what does it cost to do it you know what what is the frame of reference for this and i think people mistakenly think that you can do a car and put some bolt-ons on it and spend very little it's a expensive proposition to get into this I, i'm in a similar situation where you know i bought my my e90 or my e36 m3 or my e92 m3 uh, if it's not a Porsche, you end up spending twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars on these, you know, these unicorn parts that I'm interested in. And again, I'm generally doing a very mild, very OEM plus build. Uh, but when you do this stuff, it becomes very, very costly, very, very quickly. Uh, luckily for me, I'm able to you know, sort of expense a lot of this because I'm sharing it with you and making content. And the way that I generate the revenue to be able to buy this stuff is because of the attention that the cars bring. So. Anyway, wanted to give you an update. Didn't want you to think I've forgotten about the Evo. Uh, those other parts I'll probably have in like six or eight, six or eight weeks. Uh, and then I'll hopefully get my lug nuts at some point soon. I'm gonna order something so I can try these out. Test out the wheels, see if I like how they look. I'm sure I'll probably end up with three or four different wheels before I find the ones that I really like. And then we'll see. I don't really have any plans for this car, for selling it. I don't have any plans for doing any giveaway. That wasn't why I bought it. I bought this so that this could get me back on the road and help me overcome some of my, my darn problems. I don't know if you can tell when I started the videos, I'm probably 20 pounds lighter than when I got this car. I'm working really hard to get myself physically healthy, mentally healthy, car healthy, uh, so that way I can really you know, enjoy to the fullest all these great cars that I'm so fortunate to be able to experience. So. Thanks for the journey. Uh, I'll have a wash and talk on this clearly soon here. It's super dirty for me. Look at that, there's dirt in the wheel wells. You don't see that on a Mormon car. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, the funny thing is a lot of people come here to visit and they won't come here with their car dirty. I said, look, man, I'm not judging you. Usually three out of my four cars are dirty and you gotta, we're all fighting the same fight, especially in Florida here where we don't get a second where it doesn't rain every darn day and get the car jacked up with bugs and junk. So thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you on the next Evo video with uh, some more upgrades. See you soon.